in Home Assistant at the moment, I'm monitoring power consumption of things like solar, um, grid power, battery consumption, um, various devices around the house that are um, high load, such as dishwasher, washing machine, tumble dryer, those sorts of things. One thing that's missing from that is uh, my new air source heat pump. I have that fitted back in February, March this year. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how I'm using a Shelly monitoring device and home assistant. So I've got the data to see how much um, power I'm consuming at any particular time and monitoring kilowatt hour usage as well. Um, these devices can be used for anything. So don't just think, you know, it's for air source heat pump, anything in your house that consumes energy you can use this device on so if that's something that's going to be of use to you then stick around and watch the video thanks hi everyone my name is paul redpath welcome to project smart home so as i said in the intro i'm going to be setting up today a shelly energy monitor device um, in my for my air source heat pump so I'm going to be using this in conjunction with a current transformer also from Shelly, which I bought as part of a package. So essentially you connect the current transformer or the CT clamp to the um, power supply that you want to monitor. And in this case, it's in a fuse board in my loft next to the air source heat pump. So I connect this device to my new Shelly energy, energy monitoring um, device and it's also going to be fitted into the fuse board. What I need to do is connect a live and neutral permanent feed to this monitor and then connect the CT clamp to that and then import it into, into Shelly. So what I'll do during the course of this video is I'll take you through the installation of that um, CT clamp and monitor into the fuse board, adding the Shelly device into um, Home Assistant, and then showing you how I'm monitoring um, power and energy consumption through that, that device for my air source heat pump. As I said in the intro, um, I've, in fact, I've got CT clamps in the house already monitoring things like my um, power grid consumption, um, my Tesla Bauer, uh, uh, Tesla battery power consumption um, also I've got a my energy installation um, so within that man my energy app I can monitor consumption of um, um, solar power and I can see the battery power and I can see um, my air source heat pump in there but I can't there's no historical data in there so I can't see how much data how much energy and power has been used at a particular point in time so I'll show you some of those things as well the existing tools that I've got but the purpose of this video is obviously to show you how to get this Shelly device up and running um, so let's get into it thanks for watching so what I'll do now is just take you through uh, unboxing of these two devices so we've got the Shelly device itself the energy monitor and I ordered a 50 amp current transformer to go with it which is more than enough for my seven point something kilowatt air source heat pump but you just need to bear that in mind so on the side of this box it does show you the direction in which the um, current transformer needs to sit just to make sure that it's monitoring electricity flow in the right direction So trying to open it with, with one hand is never easy, but inside you've got the Shelly monitor itself. Um, so I'll go into this in a little bit more detail, le uh, detail later, but essentially you just need a, li a permanent live neutral. And then there's the connections for the positive and minus connection from the current transformer. Depending on how many you have, this one can take two um, CT clamps, current transformer clamps, but I'm only using one in this case and then that just goes around the uh, live feed to the device and then you've got a positive and ne negative connection that goes on the p1 and p2 um, connections on the Shelly device itself and that just clamps around the cable and inside the box you've got some instructions and I'll, I'll go through that in a sec 
So just um, quickly having a look at the instructions then. So it comes with a wiring diagram. As I mentioned earlier, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a permanent live and neutral to provide power for the Shelly. Um, I would probably recommend that you get an electrician to, to do this work um, because it is dangerous messing around inside of fuse boards. It's pretty straightforward, so it shouldn't take long for them to do. So you just need to get that permanent live and neutral onto the uh, Shelly device itself and then use the um, P1 or P2 positive and negative connections to connect the um, the current transformer up to and I'll go into the fuse box in a minute and show you how that's all connected up. So just a quick look then at what the air source heat pump looks like in the loft there is the heat pump outside as well which i'll show you a photograph of as well but in essentially inside the loft i've got the 250 liter water tank and the main controls for the heat pump itself so we can see there what's going on, on the screen and i've got a daikin altherma 3rw so you can see the heating's pressurized at 1.2 bar and the temperature you can see on the screen there of the water and the heating. So I'm using my eddy as well. So you can see here that's generating 1.7 kilowatts from the solar and that's, that's heating the water as well. Um, it's going straight into the back of um, a heating element in the water as well. So there's two sources of heating the water. One is obviously from the air source heat pump and also from the eddy, which is using the excess solar to heat the water as well. So just having a quick look at the uh, consumer unit or fuse board. Um, so inside we can see the different circuits that are servicing the air source heat pump and the energy meter as well. So what I'm focused on here is just looking at that B6 circuit. So that's a low ampage circuit that's just used for heating control. So what I'm going to do is use that circuit to give power to my um, Shelly device. And I'll show you that in a second. So that's the heating control switch fuse spur and then my Tado heating system for my thermostatic radiator valves, which uh, I can use to independently heat the different rooms in the house using the air source heat pump, which is great. So just taking you through um, the installation of what I've done. Um, as I said, I'm going to make use of that B6 6 amp circuit, which is just used for heating controls. So I've taken a live feed out the top of that circuit and plugged it into the live on the Shelly energy monitor and taken a neutral from the um, same circuit that the heating controls on as well. So that gives it the live and neutral supply. And then you can see I'm using P1 and P0 for the um, CT clamp, which have attached to the live feed for my air source heat pump. And it's important to get that the right way around as shown on the box. So the arrow needs to be pointing towards the house, which I've done and subsequently tested and it works just fine. So the other clamp that you can see on there, the black one with the arrow pointing upwards, um, that's another uh, CT clamp that I've got plugged into my eddy. So that will give me within the eddy app a real time view of um, energy consumption to so how many watts or kilowatts are being used at a particular point in time which is which is great you know for ad hoc but the reason I wanted this installed is so it gives me the historical data as well what I'll do now is show you how to add the Shelly to your Shelly app um, so basically um, click on the add Wi-Fi scan and find the network that you want to put your device onto. So I've got um, an IoT network that I've got all of these sorts of things connected to. So I'm going to select my IoT network, put in the password for it and then connect the device to that network. So 
I've kind of assumed here that you've got the app, the Shelly app already installed and up and running. So it's connecting to the Shelly and adding it to the Wi-Fi network. Pretty straightforward. And then give it a name, something that you're going to remember in the future. So I'm just calling mine ASHA, Air Source Heat Pump. Air Source Heat Pump Energy Monitor is the name that I've given mine. And then once you've done that, you can click Next and add it to a room. So I don't think I've got any other Shelly, dev Shelly devices in the loft. So I'm going to add, add a new room called Loft. And you can give it pretty pictures or take a photo of the loft or the room it's going in so you can identify these things more easy. And then save that. And that's pretty much done for adding the device into the Shelly app. So then we've got the Shelly channels reflected in the app so there's two channels if you remember from the uh, Shelly device itself this is a shown as an offline state at the moment but you know given it a couple of minutes it does come back online so you can see now that I've left it a couple of minutes and the um, energy monitors come online you can see from the uh, menu that it's currently consuming just over 18 watts there's no historical data yet, so there's nothing to look at at the moment um, in the consumption side of things. Uh, I'll just whiz whiz through all the different settings and things that you can consume, um, and then we'll go into Home Assistant. So you can see the Wi-Fi network that I'm connected to. And then you can in here you could specify exactly what um, what type of device it is. So on my others, I've used uh, I've actually specified whether it's lighting or heating, but this one seemed to be no no good match. So I've left it as other in this particular circumstance. And then in here, there are various different settings that you can apply as well to the device. I did look at eco mode, but I didn't think it was worth it. A CT clamp on mine is 50 amps. I've left it at that. I didn't bother enabling the Wi-Fi status LED because the device is tucked away in the consumer unit, so it's not worth doing it. I always find on these Shelly devices that they do need a firmware update or two. Um, so it's worth doing that just to make sure you're on the latest firmware revision before you try and add these things to Home Assistant because I have found, uh, I think it was on a lighting um, Shelly, when I tried to add it into Home Assistant it wouldn't let me until I'd updated the, um, the firmware. So we'll leave that to update for a couple of minutes and then come back to it. So that um, first firmware update has completed so I've just gone back in it looks like there's another firmware update to do so we'll we'll get that one done as well as I say it's probably important to get these these done just so um, you don't have any problems with the device so we'll come back to this in a sec oh actually it's done it's done that one quite quickly um, and that's it so I think that's probably in a good position where we can add the device into home assistant I'm um, just going through the final settings now so device name um, it's picking up the time and location by default device information IP address Wi-Fi network uh, I've noticed it's got a weak signal so I'm gonna have to have a look into that just in case that causes me any problems um, but la let's now um, have a look at getting added that into home assistant what we're going to do now then is import the Shelly device into Home Assistant. 
So as you can see from the screen here, the uh, Shelly device, the energy monitor has already been detected and picked up by Home Assistant. So it's just now a case of importing the Shelly into the environment. So I'm gonna add this new Shelly energy monitor into the loft space because that's where I've got it deployed into the um, consumer unit in the loft next to the inside air source heat pump stuff. Um, so I've already got the Shelly integration in place in my home assistant so I'm simply just adding another device. So as you can see here I've got a combination of uh, Shelly devices doing lighting and radiators and sockets and things. So this one we can see is the Shelly EM. So what I want to do first is rename that to something that's a little bit more sensible so I can understand more easily what it is when I look in uh, Home Assistant. So I'll just call it Air Source Heat Pump ASHEP Energy, Energy Monitor and we'll, we'll give it that name. Uh, once you've done that, I can go in and um, look at the properties and we can see there's various sensors um, in place. I'm just going to rename the entities so they are all the same name as well. So again, it's easier for me to find the different entities as I'm going through um, the automations and getting the reporting in place that I want for the power consumption. So I'm going to rename all the entities. There we go. Um, we can see there the two channels from the um, energy monitor, Shelly energy monitor device itself. And we're going to make use of channel one, which is where I've connected the, um, the uh, CT clamp into on my consumer unit. And that's it, it's imported, um, it's ready to use. And what I'll do now is I'll go through and show you how I'm making use of those sensors in some reports. One thing I like to do is uh, also make sure that I've got visibility of um, some additional entities. So what I want to do is see when the um, Shelly device needs a firmware update and then that gets reflected in Home Assistant and I get a lovely notification from Home Assistant to say that um, a firmware update is available. Um, you could I could just let the device update it itself but I prefer to be in control of that. So that's it, it's all done. Um, we'll move on to the next section. Okay so now we've got the um, Shelly device up and running, set up, imported into Home Assistant. I'm now going to show you how I'm using the information in uh, Home Assistant for kind of monitoring um, power and energy consumption. So this is my main dashboard. Uh, it doesn't look particularly pretty on a laptop, but I tend to use it on a mobile device. I'll show you how that looks in a minute. But essentially, I want to look focus on this power button over here on my dashboard, which kind of shows me all of the different devices around my house or in my house that I want to have a view on how power and energy is being consumed. So I'll talk you through a few of these now and then I'll get into the air source heat pump and how I've, how I've added that into the dashboard. So the first thing that I've got on here and I suppose what I should say is in my house I've got um, I've got solar panels, I've got my energy infrastructure, I've got um, a Tesla battery as well as my air source heat pump. So this kind of thing is represented on this, this dashboard. So monitoring the grid power with my energy's sensors, we can see kind of yesterday, what's that, two o'clock onwards, we can see power going back onto the grid so it must have been quite warm at this point and I'd satisfied all of the um, power needs in the house. So there's electricity going back onto the grid. Then overnight you kind of wouldn't expect much to be happening. And then in the morning, what's that, 7 o'clock this morning, there's a bit of a peak there. Which kind of aligns with 
what's going over on my heat pump as well so we've got energy coming in or electricity coming into the house that's being consumed so that gives me a good representation of what's going on there and then another one i've got here is my zappy car charger for the electric car i've got a tesla uh, model y so yesterday between 2 or well, 145 and 315 i was charging the car which fits in with the octopus energy um cozy tariff that i'm on at the moment which i moved over to when i moved when i got the air source heat pump installed so between four and seven in the morning and between one and four in the afternoon i get a cheaper rate of electricity so i tend to use that to charge the car charge the tesla battery and also get the air source heat pump to heat the water up at those times as well but i've also got the my energy stuff which also heats the water as well from solar but i'll covering that in a different video um, so hopefully you get just the gist of it so other things on here is I've got my ensuite radiator there's a 600 watt heating element in the radiator which is kind of reflected on here on how the radiator is using power and I've created another video on how I've integrated again using Shelly integrated that electric radiator into my home automation so I can get it to turn on and off when needed. Uh, a few other things in there, monitoring, dishwasher, tumble dryer, washing machine, TV, power consumption, and yeah, a few other things on there as well to give me this view of, of what's going on. So we're talking about the air source heat pump now. So if, let's have a look at how I've kind of imported those. So I've created a vertical stack card configuration and within this there's two uh, entities that I'm looking at. The first one is the um, air source heat pump energy monitor channel one energy. So if you remember on the energy monitor for Shelly there was two channels. I'm only using the first channel so this is monitoring the energy. And I've got that as an entity which is reflected here. So in this period, we've used 10.56 kilowatt hours of electricity for the air source heat pump. So everything I do on here is kind of around a day view of the world. And I can see today, 1st of August, between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., the water was being heated by the air source heat pump which again aligns with my um, cozy tariff and I've got um, a schedule set up on the air source heat pump to, to, to make use of those. And then the second, second part of this is um, monitoring the power consumption. So again, using the air source heat pump energy monitor power um, from the, the Shelly I'm monitoring the power consumption and I've chosen to, to do it over a day period. You could do it over five minutes or a day. I tended to do it over an hour, so I've got an hour's view over one day, but you could do five days, for example. But I just wanted to do it over one day. So it's pl fairly flexible. Um, you can do a line chart or a bar chart. I prefer the line chart and you can see the, the mean, min and max of what's been consumed yeah so this is using um, a graph um, card from in here so if I was to add another one for example so if I did graph yeah statistics graph that's essentially what I'm using here to give me this data that you can mess around with there and then for the um, air source heat pump for the energy side at the top that's just an entity um, entity card so that gives me exactly the information that I want and the historical information that I want as well which I haven't got at the moment so within the my energy app I have I'm using another current transformer which is connected into my eddy which gives me a real-time view within the app and I'll show this on the screen a real-time view of um, electricity being used but I don't have any 
historical data like I've got here. So this is the main driver for me wanting to have this. Um, and it's as straightforward as that. So the only other thing that I've done is, again, back on my home screen, I've got another button here for um, or another tile, whatever you want to call it, for heat pump. And within here, I can see various in bits of information about my Daikin um, air source heat pump. So the temperature of the water is pretty good to know. So that's, that's, that's cooler than normal. So hopefully the sun will start heating that up soon. Um, and then on the left hand side here, these are the, um, the bits of information that I've added in as entities into this dashboard as well. So I've just added an entities card and I've chosen to display in here whether the air source heat pump energy monitor um, Shelly device is on or off. And again, energy information, real time, power information, voltage it's drawing, and then the air source heat pump, whether that requires a firmware update. It's only been in a week or so, so I'd be surprised if that needed an update. But on my other Shelly devices, I do get prompted now um, when a firmware update's required. So hopefully, um, hopefully that's of use. I, I get, as I say, it can be used for anything. I've just chosen here to use this for my air source heat pump, but, but you could use it for, for any, um, I guess, mains powered device that you've got in the house. If you've got an air conditioning unit and you can get to that live cable and you can monitor the, um, the flow of electricity, then you could be used for that. Hopefully that's use. Um, thanks. As well as the um, reporting screens that I showed earlier under the power section in my dashboard i also wanted to show you what comes native within home assistant so as i mentioned earlier i've got uh, solar panels i've got battery i've got air source heat pump set up in in my house um, so i've managed to kind of reflect all of that in the dashboards that come in home assistant so i think this is this is a really great way to kind of visualize what's going on so if I just talk you through what I've got in here, uh, hopefully it'll be of interest. So for today, 1st of August, 2024, I've got, I've had 30 kilowatt hours of energy from the sun that's um, either been fed back onto the grid if I'm not using it or consumed by the house. So I've consumed 18.1 kilowatt hours of energy in the house. And for my battery, I've, put uh, 7.1 kilowatt hours of uh, energy into the battery and I've used 3.9 kilowatt hours. So across the day, we can kind of visualize um, what's going on. So battery power consumed going across here. So this, this is kind of what I'd expect to see during the overnight hours and the batteries being used to kind of power the house. And then as I mentioned earlier, I've got the Octopus Cozy Tariff that's charging my battery. So there's obviously been a little bit of power that's gone into the battery there during those hours. Um, again, that's continued and continued. And then kind of around between nine and 10, you can see the sun starting to hit the solar panels and these kind of burnt orange looking um, bars are solar consumed and then the pink ones are um, for the battery import so you can see there's there's um, solar power going into the battery there and then the solar exported energy beyond at the bottom there and then as you would kind of expect to see here with the solar production you've got this nice curve as the sun comes up in the morning going up to the peak of the day and now it's um, later on in the, in the day we can see the um, kind of solar tapering off. Uh, on the right hand side here we can see what's been returned to the grid which has been 9.12 kilowatt hours returned to the grid which is um, once the house is used what it wants and the battery and water's heated up on those sorts of things. 
So I've self-consumed 64% of energy today from solar and overall 90% uh, self-sufficient, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then at the bottom, what I've got here is based on all of the devices that I have in my house that um, report on energy consumption, I've got those listed in this table here and I'll show you how to do that on the dashboard shortly. But essentially over different parts of the day, you can see when certain things are consuming energy. So there's the air source heat pump, um, kind of been, and the dishwasher's gone on early at that point. Air source heat pump, washing machine plug, dishwasher, ensuite radiator. So you can see total kilowatt hours used and what's consuming that, which I think is a really lovely visualization. And then obviously the air source heat pumps using the, the most about amount of energy closely followed at the moment by the TV. Kids are off school, so yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. And then dishwasher, ensuite radiator, that, that's automated to come on when um, humidity is detected. And then the washing machine plug and a little bit of tumble dryer there as well. So to how you add those in there if i look in uh, settings and then dashboards oops oops in here i can look at the energy dashboard that comes with this so there's a little bit of setting up that needs to be done so once you've got uh, entities in your home assistant environment you can consume so here i'm using my solar edge import entity and my solar edge export entity to show me how much energy i'm consuming or exporting to the grid and then from a solar edge point of view energy produced and then from the battery i've got the um, tesla powerwall integration in home assistant and that's showing me how much um, how the battery is operating basically what's been imported and exported uh, no longer have gas, I've cut that off, don't need that anymore since I've got the air source heat pump, so completely electric house. Um, water consumption you could add, and then here are the individual devices that I mentioned earlier. Um, so anything that I can monitor, monitor energy use on. So I'm going to do a video on um, the smart plugs that I've got on my tumble dry washing machine and dishwasher, so I can see how much any of the energy they're consuming and how you can essentially turn them into kind of smart devices. Um, TV socket in the living room, Nintendo Switch, and then various electric radiators, the Zappy charger for the Tesla and the air source heat pump. And that's basically just, just consuming the, um, the entities from the air source heat pump in fact from the Shelly device that's uh, monitoring the air source heat pump and that gives you that data there so I think that's a, a great way to kind of visualize that and you can obviously change this different dates you can choose a period of time so I could have a look at the whole week if I wanted to and then select that and it gives me a, a representation of this last week of what my energy consumption export values have been so I've been 56% self self-sufficient this last week um, with quite good solar production on some days nearly 40 kilowatt hours and then overall here zappy charge has been the biggest um, the biggest consumer of energy which you would kind of expect because it's charging the car followed by the tumble dryer utility room radiator and so on and so forth so i think that's a really cool dashboard that that people should be making use of in um, in their home assistant environment hopefully that was useful thanks very much so that's the end of the video hope you found it useful um, i've obviously gone through and shown you a little bit about my environment in home assistant and some of the giving you some of the insight into how i've got my green home set up with my solar panels and uh, battery and how I'm using things like my energy 
to, to help with the energy efficiency. Um, I've installed the, the Shelly device, uh, physically installed it and adopted that into the Shelly app. And then we've gone through adding that into Home Assistant. And then, you know, the, the reason for doing that is obviously to, to get the reporting and understand the energy consumption of these devices, um, which we have shown you in Home Assistant as well. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, I'd start making use of the energy dashboards that come natively in Home Assistant, even if you're not interested in doing this sort of thing with the Shelly devices, because I certainly find that that super useful and you can start telling the kids off or people in the house when they're, they're leaving things on and you can actually show the real impact that that's having. Um, hopefully you found it useful. I'd love to get some feedback and comments from you. Uh, if there's any other videos that you'd like me to do or if there's any other content um, around what I've spoken about today that you'd find useful, then, then let me know in the comments and hope to see you again in another video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.